the material I will cover today is on VAR models. So, um, so far we have been uh, looking at models that are a single equation model. So meaning that only we have one equation. And um, today, and when we talk about VARs or VAR models, you have a system of equations to estimate. So um, I explained that in the introduction of this lecture and also in the recorded material. So you could uh, go back to the videos, but what I'm planning to do today is to um, show you how to estimate a VAR model using R. So this is a vector autoregressive model in R. We need to put the steps or we need to think about the steps, what we going to do, but keep in mind that we have a system of equations, uh, meaning we have, um, if we have three endogenous variables in the system, we'll have three equations. So one equation pair uh, for each endogenous variables. So, um, the main package we use to uh, estimate VAR model in, uh, in R is called VARs. So the first thing we do, we need to activate VARs. So, um, and also we will, um, in this tutorial, I will also need to uh, use um, a time series um, package, which is called uh, T, So we activate these two, but also there are other packages that we may uh, need for plotting, like if we use ggplot or, so we, we did um, an introduction before to tidyverse. So I'm sure um, many of you would have heard about tidyverse before. So it's basically a collection of packages, which you can, um, um, sorry, which you can use uh, to um, um, just by activating uh, or calling tidyverse, you activating all these packages like um, um, dplyr, like uh, ggplot. These are the two packages that we explained uh, in some details in previous weeks. So um, we, I'm going to call this one as well, tidyverse. Uh, there's a new package today, which I haven't discussed with you before, which is Stargazer, which uh, basically a very nice package to create tables, nice looking tables. Um, and, and that is something I will show you how to use today. So first of all, those who just uh, came in now, we're talking about how to estimate a VAR, a VAR model. In, in R. And as I said, uh, in VAR models, you have uh, um, a, a system of equations. Um, so for this purpose, I will work with simulated data today, just as an example to work you through um, how, to, how to do that in R, how to do the estimation in R. So simulated data mean, meaning that I have generated the data myself. I know about the data generation process, uh, the data generating process, and I and I know how um, how much the parameters, the, the the true parameters are. So um, from here, let me just first uh, go walk you through the steps that you need to know about estimating VAR. And I'm sure if you if you watch the recording uh, or um, went through the lecture notes, you would have noticed that. So um, first of all, you need to check for the, the integration properties of your series. You want to make sure that your series are I0, so meaning they are stationary. You also need to choose the appropriate lag length. So basically how many lag to include because in each equation, let's say um, I have variable Y1T, Y1T will depend on itself or I, um, in time T minus one. So it, yt minus one will be on the right hand side. So how many lags? Is it only one time period lag or more? Or more? This is something we will discuss how to use um, some information criteria to um, decide on the optimal lag length. So, um, so lag length. Um, so this is optimal lag length, you, you need to decide on that. And as I explained in, in the lecture, 
in the video in the recorded material um, if you use too many lags you um, uh, losing more observations and you will have you might be facing a dimensionality curse or problem where you have too many parameters to estimate and using too few lags that will cause um, some serial uh, or autocorrelation uh, um, uh, problem with in your errors. So anyway, so that's why we need to um, be sure about what the optimal lag length. So we, for, for that purpose, we use uh, information criteria to tell us which, um, uh, what is the optimal uh, lag length. And for this example today, the way, because I created the data myself, it's basically is going to be only one lag. But of course, if you, when you use different data, you might have um, uh, different suggestions by uh, the uh, information criteria. Then you estimate the model, okay? And in terms of the estimation, given that we have the system of equations, so if we have two variables, like the example we'll discuss today, we have y1 uh, and y2. So we will have two equations then two equations, so one equation for y1 and one equation for y2, and that's why y1 and y2 uh, are called endogenous variables or determined inside that system. So we'll have one equation for y1, uh, y1 t depends on y1 t minus one and y2 t minus one. So this is the first equation, and of course, some, um, some error uh, as well. So to estimate this sort of model in, in VAR model is very simple and it's very convenient because what you do, you use OLS, um, uh, but you go equation by equation. Of course, you don't need to do that yourself. Um, the package uh, VARs will do that for us, but you should know uh, what is happening behind the scene. So basically what it does is just goes equation, uh, the, it estimate the model equation by equation using uh, the OLS to estimate the model and also you need to make sure that the model is stable and I'm, and, and I'm going to talk about this uh, later but basically you look at something called the eigenvalues and you want to make sure that these eigenvalues are um, less than one and so they are smaller than than one and basically if you are uh, if your series are um, stationary so you're likely to have these are less than one so, um, and then we will learn about how to uh, do the Granger uh, causality test in, in R. So whether Y1 Granger cause Y2 or whether Y2 Granger cause Y1. And uh, this is something we will cover in this uh, tutorial. And then we will know how to generate the impulse response functions and the uh, variance decomposition as well. So these are the steps or these are what we're going to cover. These are the steps that we're going to cover today. And as I said, the data I'm using today is um, uh, generated by myself. I generated the data myself, myself. And what we have here is um, a data set where uh, there are two variables. We have Y1 and uh, Y2. And um, these are 200 observations. You could um, use the usual stuff like we used before to explore your data or to look what, how the data looks look like. So if I say head Y, that will give me the, the first few observations. If I say tail uh, Y, that will give me the, uh, the last few observations. And as you see, we have 200 observations. And if you're not sure if you, you want to check that, you could actually use also the uh, uh, function length, the function length, um, sorry, of the function structure that will give you um, uh, the structure of your data frame. So we have a data frame, uh, we have uh, 200 observations, we have two variables, and the first variable y1 is a numerical variable, the first, the second variable y2, again, is a numerical variable, and these are the first view um, uh, uh, points or data points. So, um, so uh, a good idea when you deal with um, time series data is basically to uh, plot your data. So I'm going to use um, a function called autoplot. And um, I converted these before as a, TS, um, as a TS object. So basically to convert that as a TS object, or that basically use 
the TS function. And all that you need to do is just to pass the first column or the first variable, which is here, sorry, uh, which is Y1. And what you need to enter is the start date. And for that start, um, that's um, that equal, sorry, start equal. Um, C, um, that start, let's say start from 2000 because these are two, uh, 200 observations. So I could assume that these are like monthly data, which start from 2000 uh, January. And uh, basically um, you could add the, you need to add the frequency. Um, and in that case will be 12. So what does that do actually? It, it basically take that first Y1 here, uh, column here and convert that into a time series object. Um, and it tells R where the, the, the date, how the date starts. So this is, and the frequency of the data, this is month, this monthly data, that's why the frequency is 12. If it was quarterly data, so the frequency here would have been uh, four, if it is annually, the, the frequency would have been one. So in that case, we basically converting that or taking that object or that variable Y1, converting it into a time series object. We could do the same thing for um, Y2. The, the only reason I'm doing that just because to, um, I just wanna plot that, use auto plot function just to show the, the, the variable or the, um, how the series behave over time. And here you can see the date. Uh, we got this right on the horizontal axis and the value for Y1 on the vertical axis. And from what we see from this series is going up and down um, uh, around uh, what it seems a constant mean. So it seems, uh, and also the variance is constant. So it seems uh, to be stationary uh, series. And if you don't know what stationary means, just go back to the previous videos about stationarity in time series, which explain what stationary series uh, would mean. So this kind of looks okay, looks like a stationary series. And I know that because this is how I created this data. Uh, you could do the same for, um, again, to just to explore the uh, the other series uh, Y2, which is again, I know it is stationary series. Um, so plot the series and again, it's, it's stationary series anyway, because that's, but, in all cases, you still need to um, uh, to do the um, the test to to test whether this is a stationary series or not. You need you need to use the um, augmented DK Fuller test. So that's what I'm going to do now. So the first steps, I'm going to copy that. Okay, um, and this is the first step now. So we want to do a DK Fuller test. To do a DK Fuller test, I um, use the um, function called um, ADF test, which is basically come, which comes from T-series library. And I think I, that's why I, I loaded the T-series library, uh, but then all the other functions I will use today, they come from uh, VARS. So from this package, um, the only one that comes from here is just the ADF test. So um, let's do the first, um, the first test. I'm going to call it whatever you want to call it, just give it a name. Uh, just to save it uh, in an object in R. Um, so you can call this anything you want. Uh, maybe if you want to say like ADF Y1, because this is, uh, we want to do like um, a Dickey Fuller test for um, Sirius Y1. And all what you need to do just to type the ADF uh, test uh, function. And, and by the way, as we said before, if you're not sure about how to use that function, just go uh, to the help file, read the help file. So question mark at the uh, function name. And if you um, run that, it will give you, this is augmented, augmented Dickey Fuller test. And it comes from T-series package. It tells you the package name and it tells you what um, inputs you need or arguments you need for this. And it explains everything here. And, and, and also it gives you some uh, examples at the end. So what we need to do here is to, um, um, enter the um, the series, like the series name. So we'll start with um, Y1. So if I if I say, okay, um, do the, uh, oops. yeah, it's here, sorry. Um, it's already saved here. So I just wanna um, print that. So you could either say print, okay. 
and sorry and and press enter like execute this line just to print because it saved it saved the results here in 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 a list object um or you could just simply uh type the name so if i do that and and, and run it will print the the test results if i just print the 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 object here probably will give me some summary of that you could also put summary and i think if you if you do that it just again if you just type the name will give you the um, let's look at, into this object. So when you look at this object, you'll see the statistic. Uh, that's DK Fuller statistic here, the parameters, the p-value, the method, uh, what test it is, etc., and what, what series or what variable used for that. But this is not the point here. The point here, let's look at the, the, the output here. What we have, we have augmented DK Fuller test, and on uh, we use that on uh, Y1. And what we need to look at is the p-value here. And of course, you need to know the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that the data is not stationary. The data has a unit root. So that means the data is not stationary. So if you reject that, that means the data is stationary. So to reject or to not reject, that depends on the p-value. If the small p-value is smaller than your significance level, let's say uh, 5%. So if it's smaller than 5%, then you reject the null hypothesis. And that means that concludes that the series is stationary and and we already know that because that's how we created the series but then when you work on your own you will not be you, you wouldn't know you need to really to test and you need to be able to make a decision based on the test so um i know by visuals by by visualizing the data by plotting the data you could tell if it has a trend if it if it's going around a constant mean or constant variance but still sometimes in some cases it's really difficult to tell by just looking at the graph. So what you need to do is to, to do a formal test for uh, unit root. And one of the most popular tests or the basic tests I would say is the augmented Dickey Fuller test. And this is how you do it in, in R and this is how you make the decision. So the null hypothesis is that the um, series has a unit root or not, not stationary. And if you have a small P value, which is smaller than let's say 5%, that means you reject the null hypothesis and that means, or that concludes that the series is stationary. So in our case here, we have p-value is 0 0.01, which is smaller than 5%. So in, in such case, we would conclude that y1 is stationary. So of course, we could do the same for, um, for y2. I'm not just going to save it in object now. I'm just going to copy this. So um, the reason you save it in an object, just if you want to go back to this later, but if you just... Of course, if I do that, it will just print the results straight on the screen. So here it print the, resu the results on the screen, uh, on the console. And again, it tells me that, okay, the p-value here is um, small. And that means the, the series are, um, the y2 series is stationary too. So if you look at the plot here, I mean, when you look at the plot, it seems, yeah, going up and down around the constant mean and the variance is kind of constant. So these are the properties of um, a stationary series, but at the end of the day, as I said, you will uh, need to, um, um, you'll need to do a formal test anyway. So uh, moving from here, so now we, at least we, we, we now we know that uh, the first step here, the um, DK Fuller test, and then I need then to decide on the uh, optimal lag length. As I said before, you use the information criteria for that. And one important thing to know is that um, uh, it's important if, if you have too few lags, you will have serial correlation. And that means the information still included in the uh, error term that you did not um, uh, extract or you're not making use of. And uh, if you use less, um, if you use too many lags, then you will have uh, so many parameters, too many parameters, you might have too many parameters to estimate. So, um, so you need to, you need to uh, find out the uh, uh, optimal lag length. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to save this in an object. So, I mean, let's be consistent. So I'm going to save this one in an object as well as because we've been saving these objects. So I'm going to run this. So going back, going back to the lag length. So I'm going to save this in, in an object. I'm going to call it lag. And that uh, the, um, the, the function for that's called var select. So var select again, this is, uh, this comes from vars package package. And if you're not sure about how to use it, 
or what arguments it takes, then again, you need to read the help file. Um, just, just press on, uh, just type um, this question mark and then the name of the function and that tells you it comes from VARS and um, it explained this as information criteria, blah, blah, blah. It tells you how to use it. But for our um, demonstration today, I'm just gonna stick with the uh, basic uh, thing. So basically what I entered here, I'm not using individual series. I'm using the uh, data frame in which uh, the uh, all the series are stored, which in this case, we have uh, Y1 and Y2 um, stored in a data frame I called Y, and that's why I'm using here Y. So if I do that, by the way, as I said before, because I generated this data and I know that the, um, the lag length should be one, but if we look at this, um, again, it's saved in, in, in a lag object. So if we just type the word lag, and um, this will give you different information criteria. So all these, uh, the, 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 the archaic, the Schwarz, etc. cetera. So the, 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 the main point here, these are the number of lags, whether to go one, two, three, four, five, up to six, and then actually it went to, to 10 because, um, and by the way, you could, if you go to the uh, arguments here, you can um, you can determine the maximum uh, lag length. So if I if I say here lag max, if I say here for example like lag max go to uh, three for example, and I run this again, so it's not going to take me to ten lag um, uh, uh, ten lags because this is just the default. Uh, input for this argument. So if you don't enter it, so to use 10, but for this case, I've just put three just to demonstrate that now it just go only to the third lag. So these are the criteria. And the idea is to use select the lag length that minimize the value of these criteria, information criteria. And basically the selection, so what makes it easy to look at here is just R already give you the selection or this, this function print the selection according uh, or the lag length according to each one of these criteria. And as you can see, all the four criteria agree that we should use uh, only one lag. And as I said, I know that before because I created, I generated this data and I know it should be only one lag, but um, it, it was just a, a, a simple and a, a very easy example just to show you how to use the var select function in R to check the optimal lag length according uh, from, um, according to different information criteria, and um, if you um, um, if you look at the lag list here, you will see there are two things here: the selection and criteria. Sometimes you want to uh, um, you want to call one of these um, uh, from a list. So the way you do this, let's say I don't want to print all of this. I don't want to print all the results. I don't want to print the criteria, I just want to print the selection. So what you need to do is just to type lag and then choose selection. So in that case, I'm just, I don't want to see all the criteria, all the uh, the values for these for, each, for, for every lag. I just want to know uh, straight away the selection or what uh, these criteria um, suggest. So that's why I use lag selection. So I'm just basically printing uh, one object inside that list, which is a uh, selection. As you see, uh, all the criteria suggest that we should have uh, only one leg. Anyway, so now we, we finish this step now. So um, we decided on the optimal lag length, and now we want to uh, move forward to, um, to proceed to the uh, estimation. So as I said before, and in a VAR model, you have a system of equations. So in this example now, we have two variables, two endogenous variables, y1 and y2, which means we would have two equations, one equation for y1, so y1 will appear on the left-hand side, and then on the, uh, on the right-hand side, you will have um, y1 t minus one and y2 t minus one. Why it is only one lag? Because the information criteria suggests to use only one lag. And the second equation you would have y2 on the left hand side on the right hand side you'll have y2 um, t minus 1 and y1 t minus 1 so again only one lag because the information criteria suggests only one lag so we have two equations and to estimate these two equations what 
uh, the software does is basically going to uh, one equation at a time using OLS. So um, of course you don't see that in, in the background, but when you see the output now in a, in a, in a second, you will see what I'm um, talking about. So, so let's call this estimate or whatever you call the object. I'm just gonna save this into an object. And the, uh, the function it's capital VAR. And again, if you're not sure about the arguments to use here, uh, use the help file, question mark, the name of the function, press enter or execute that or run that line, you will see the help file for that. So uh, the next step, as I said, you just uh, put the uh, data, wh which date, so the first input is your, the first argument basically is your data. And then you need to determine on the lag length and the lag length here, I'm going to enter that P equal one because the information criteria suggested to have only one lag. And then um, you could, um, let's just have a look at the other arguments. So if you go to this, you will see um, that Y is your data, okay? Containing the endogenous variables, which are two variables in this case. And P here is um, an integer that for the lag order, so default is one. So if I didn't enter that, so basically it will just consider it one, but again, I would like to know which um, uh, the lag order. So just basically, maybe it's a good practice just to type it, uh, even though we know that the default is one, but maybe a few months later, you would forget what the default was. So just use it, um, uh, just type it. And also the, the, the next um, uh, choice here is type, sorry, type, uh, the next argument here is type. So you could include constant trend of both. So that means this is the deterministic component on your, um, in your um, uh, uh, equation. So you could add uh, C or constant or add um, a trend, a time trend, or obviously in our data, when we plot the data, we didn't see a time trend. So that's why I'm not going to include a time trend. So basically I'm just gonna say none, I'm not going to add uh, 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 deterministic components here. Um, so there's no trend, there's no uh, 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 constant. Um, and then, yeah, and then let's let's say uh, I'm, I'm happy with that, or this is just a basic estimation, and maybe you can compare it with other, if you want change of one of these, one or two, or add more arguments. But if we, if we do that, then uh, what, what we have here, again, it saves the results in an object here, here, if you can see this, it's called stem, that's what I called it. And it's again, it's a list when you open that, when you look into that, inside that, you'll see the var results. So this is an equation for y1, and this is the equation for y, uh, y2. And then it tells you um, other like information about the, the estimation. But what you could do, I mean, to make it easy for yourself, you could just say summary uh, of your, of your um, bar estimation. So if I do that, if I run this line, it tell it gave me like a summary of the estimation. So what happened here? This is what I was talking about before. So these are var estimation results and you will see the endogenous variables are y1 and y2, the deterministic variables, none, we didn't include any. The sample size is 199, remember? Our sample size was 200, but we lost one observation because we had we have one lag. You remember, as I told you, the more lags you include, the more uh, observations uh, you will uh, lose. So uh, this gives you the first equation. As I said before, the first equation, you will have one equation for y1. And in that case, y1 depends on y1, so y1 in time t depends on y1 in time t minus one. And the way it is printed here, it's L1 means lag one. So that means y t minus one. And y2, uh, and depends also on y2 t minus one. So that's why it's written y2 dot L1. One that means this y2 in time t minus one. And this is the estimation for the first equation. And as I said, what you have is um, um, uh, OLS, est OLS estimation. 
and that's what it does. So this is the estimated coefficient, and um, these are the uh, p-values, whether it is significant or not. And by construction, or the way I generated the data, basically is um, these these coefficients are very close to what I used to generate this data. And just go back to the lecture notes to see uh, where um, the 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 how I did how I created the data and what properties or the data have. And this is something I explain in the lecture notes in the slides. But anyway, but but for now, this is uh, again as like a very simple basic example to explain how to estimate VAR model um, using R. And this then you move to the um, the the second equation uh, y two and y two here again. Uh, depends on y1 in time t minus one and y2 in time t minus one. And again, we have only one lag and these are the symmetric coefficient and whether they are significant or not. And of course, when you have these stars here, that means they are significant and we having three stars in the significant at 1% uh, level. So anyway, so um, this is this is the a summary of the output. Uh, one thing I, I said I will uh, show you today is how to use a uh, stargazer. So this is like a bit confusing, not a bit confusing. It's just a very, um, not very, um, I would say nicely looking um, table or output to look at or how I'm going to report that in my paper or my report or my research. So usually um, I use um, stargazer or people use uh, stargazer as um, um, a function, a nice, package that can produce really uh, nice tables. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to show you that um, in, if you print, if you go to estimate, like the, this is the, uh, the, in your list. And if you choose um, those who did the first course, they know how to select from inside um, uh, uh, a list. So all what I need to do is to type var uh, result because if you open this, you'll see this is this these are var, var results here. So basically, I want to choose this object here. So if you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to select it, as you see, if I go inside the object itself, I'm just going to do this again. So here var list, and I want to choose that. I want to 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 pick that from that list. So and I don't know how to do it. So Hani did this uh, because I know how, what is it called. But then maybe if you don't know. Uh, just go to the um, your your list, and then if you click here, then it will give you uh, how to um, the selection of that item, how to be, which is exactly the same uh, what I'm using here. So if I do that, so basically I'm telling Stargazer to produce a table using this object here or this selection from inside that list, which basically I just want the a nice looking table uh, of the results. And I want Stargazer to, uh, of course, you will have to, uh, Stargazer is a very um, rich package, which is like full of arguments. So to master Stargazer or how to use it, you need like more than just a few seconds, <laughs> more than what I'm doing now. Uh, but what I'm saying now, or what I'm showing you is the most basic output you can get from Stargazer. And I do advise people to, I do recommend that people go to um, the uh, help file and read about how to use uh, um, Stargazer. Of course, if you don't have Stargazer installed, you need to install it first. So if you, if you, if you try to find the help file and it tells you there's no function called Stargazer, then you need to install and install packages. We said that before. So use that command, install packages, and then put, um, I'm just gonna copy and paste and just put Stargazer and run this will we'll, we'll, um, install the package and then activate the package using uh, the library um, command. Um, of course, I did that in the beginning. And as we said before, you install the package only once. So I already installed it, so I don't need to do that one. And also I already activated that package when I start this tutorial. So anyway, so uh, what I'm saying here, if you look at the um, amount of things, like so many things that you can do, and so many arguments you can you can use with Stargazer. So I'm not going through these in detail today, but what I'm saying now with this sort of var output, so it could be like very straightforward, very easy to produce a table. Just use the function Stargazer, 
stargazer and put the estimate result here because I want just to see the result and put the type equal um, um, uh, text because I want to show because you could you could produce like different um, different output using a stargazer. I'm just going to show you this quickly. You could have HTML, you could have uh, LaTeX for those who use LaTeX. Um, yeah, so you could see here, this is type LaTeX. Um, I'm just going to, yeah. So this tells you here a character vector that specifies what type of output command you want. As we said, there's um, LaTeX and HTML and text. So these are the different choices here. So I'm going to choose text because I want this just to print on the screen. And also you can export that in a nice um, word file um, or text file. But again, this is not our point today. Our point just we want to see the, um, the output here. So basically that's what you can see now. So this is like a table, you see, this is like kind of a table you would see in a publication or on a, on a paper, or you should report in your, uh, in your work, if you, if in, in your report. So basically it tells you the, the first column is the first equation for why uh, uh, y1 and the second column is y, y2 equation. We say there are two equations and these are the estimated coefficients and tells you the number of observations or the other statistic that you might be interested in to report. Um, and that looks much better than just looking through this, flipping through this, these results and try to find out what is what or which, which one is significant or which one is not and etc. cetera. So, um, so this is one way to do it. So Stargazer is a very, um, nice and 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 really uh, good package that you need to to learn how to use but anyway so so now we we did the estimation and um as you will know when you revise the um, var model lecture uh, the estimated coefficient from var itself they are not very helpful because um uh, in in a, in a, in in a real situation you might have like more variables more lags and it become very difficult to interpret these coefficients. So one way to deal with that is that going through the um, other steps, you would have to look at things like Granger causality. So which variable causes which variable? And also you, you need to look at the, um, the impulse response functions. Um, if there is a shock in one variable, how this affect other variables and, and all sorts of these stuff. But before we do that, let's just check our model that our model is stable. And as I said, uh, when we said that, we, we talked about the eigenvalues and we said that these eigenvalues should be less than one. So I'm just going to show you here how to um, get these um, eigenvalues. So basically, uh, the function called uh, roots, and you, you need to pass your um, estimation and um, the, 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 the object. So I save the object. The estimated var is saved in an object called estim. That's what I named it. You could you could name it anything else. And uh, again, if you type roots here, it will tell you what this uh, function does and how how to use that function. I'm just gonna um, add this to return the uh, uh, modulus because that's what I want to show you. So I'm just copy and paste. When I when I run this, what we see here, we see what we said. We need these to be less than one to in order to have a stable model. And obviously, from what you see now, 0 0.4, 0 0.429. So they are less than one, and um, that means uh, we can just proceed to the next step. The next step, as I said before. Uh, to interpret var, um, the uh, estimated coefficient from var model is not might not be very um, straightforward, might not be very uh, um, uh, useful. Uh, that's why we uh, we go to do uh, we go further by doing a Granger causality test. So we know we want to know which variable causes which variable, and and to do that in in R, all what you need to do let's say let's do um, let's check. Granger. I'm just going to call it Granger. And again, you can name it any anything. So this is just a name. And I'm going to call it Granger Y1. So the function itself called uh, causality. And it comes from uh, vars. You see, once I start, when I started typing, I don't know if you have noticed this, when I start typing the function name, you'll see between brackets here, of course, it's just <clears throat> um, what the function does and the arguments that you need, but also it tells you 
that this comes from VARS package. So as I said, VARS package is the main package we use today. So most of the functions we're using today come from VARS package. So you make sure to install that before you uh, go, like do this example on your own or do any VAR model. You need to install the package VARS and then activate that, that package. So anyway, so the, um, as I said, this is the, um, the, the main um, or the, the, the function that we use to uh, check the causality or Granger causality. And what we need to do in this case, we, um, we need to enter the uh, var um, results object, which is again, var results are uh, stored in uh, estimation. <clears throat> and you want to tell, um, to tell uh, the, the package uh, which variable you want to look at, which variable causes which variable. So in this case, I'm just gonna look at the first variable, y1, and um, I'll see whether y1 causes um, uh, y2 or not. So when you run this, of course, it will save the results in Granger one, uh, Granger y1 uh, um, object. That's how I named it. You could name it uh, anything else. Um, uh, what you could do, you could, um, um, the same way you could look at here or you could type summary. So this is Granger here. Um, um, or you could just type summary or you could just pick the um, Granger. I'm just going to pick the first. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so just Granger results. So I'm just going to pick that. And if you look at that, it tells you, okay, the null hypothesis is uh, y1 do not Granger cause y2, okay? So having a small p-value, you reject that null hypothesis, okay? So meaning in this case, we do because we look at the p-value here, it's very small, so it's nearly like a zero. So looking at this p-value, uh, it's very small p-value, so you reject this null hypothesis, which means the null hypothesis y1 does not re a Granger cause, but if I reject that, that means y1 does cause uh, 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 y2. Let's do this for the second one, for the second, uh, the, the other way. So now we want to see whether um, y2 causes y1 or not. And I'm just gonna, um, I'm just editing the code here. So I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna print the results on the screen. And this one, for example, here, again, this is how I generated the data anyway, but in your, um, in any other example, you will be able to decide whether, um, uh, which variable uh, is uh, Granger cause which variable. So in this example here, the null hypothesis is again, uh, Y2 do not Granger cause Y1. And in that case, uh, we fail to reject that. So you're kind of accepting that. So basically that's true. Then that means here uh, the conclusion is that Y2 does not Granger cause Y1. So now at least we know from this exercise or from this example that, or in this example that Y1 Granger cause Y2, but Y2 do not Granger cause uh, y, uh, Y1. And if you don't understand what Granger causality is, please um, uh, go back to the video on VARS. And uh, I, uh, my lecture on VAR, which I explain what that means in detail and what are the, um, uh, like the, 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 the logic behind all of this. But as I said, the, pair, the purpose or the main, the main reason behind this tutorial is just to show you how to implement our, uh, VAR model, how to estimate a VAR model in, in R. So, so far we've been going through the steps we decided or we, we showed in the beginning. As we said, you go, you first, you test the integration properties of your, your series by using ADF, uh, um, um, which is the augmented Dickey Fuller test. And then you choose the optimal lag length using the uh, information criteria. Then you estimate the model. We know that the model is estimated uh, uh, equation by equation using OLS. Then you check if your model is stable or not. And as I said, if it's stationary, um, it's likely you, you'll have this table. And then Granger causality, this is the next step, which we just, finished now so we know we want to know which variable causes which variable the last thing which the irf and variance decomposition or the impulse response function and variance decomposition um, um that's again that's easy to do in in r so let's say i'm going to call this again i'm just given 
a name of an object. So you can name it whatever you want, but I usually uh, like to name my object something like meaningful, something I can uh, understand. So I'm going to call this IRF1. Uh, and the function is called IRF, so um, IRF. And when you do that, you'll see that IRF here is or comes from uh, package vars. And um, if you don't know how to use it, again, please use the, the help file to learn about it. So what are the inputs here or the arguments? So basically the first one is the var results, which object, which is estim, that's, I, that's how I called it. Remember when we estimate a var model here, um, I just, it happened that I called it estim. So I mean, you, you can't call it anything else. So, um, um, but just be consistent. So if you, if, you, if you give the var results different name, then that's what you need to enter here. So this is just the results uh, object. And um, in, in, in this case, I want to, which you want, you need to decide or to tell R which variable to shock. So where is the shock coming from and which variable you want to see the response for. So in this case, I'm going to say, and this is the shock is impulse. So I'm going to say impulse come from Y1. So there's a shock in Y1. And there is, I want to see the response of uh, Y2, okay? And one more thing you need to, uh, to, to tell R. So basically these are the basic inputs here. So you have, or arguments you have, uh, the var object, the results object, which I, which we named stem. And then you need to tell R which variable to shock or impulse come from, and then which variable you want to check the response for. Uh, as I said, comma again, and one, one, one more thing, maybe you could um, uh, tell R, which is how many time period ahead to calculate this response for, which is called uh, N ahead. So this is basically how many steps ahead. So in this example, let's say, I'm just, I just want to look at 20 uh, month ahead, which mean because the data is monthly, the, 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 we assumed it's monthly. I mean, I generate 200 observation could be anything, but we just assumed it's monthly. So that means uh, if your data is daily, so that means you're looking at 20 days ahead. Um, if your data is annually, that means you're looking at 20 um, years ahead. So uh, in ahead, so uh, is 20 and then, um, I want uh, to do bootstrap. So basically uh, to create the confidence interval. So it tells me um, um, whether these responses are significant or not. And we'll see this in, in a minute. And then you can also determine how many times to replicate or to, um, uh, to, 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 to do the model. So to, to how many runs you do. And in this case, I mean, I think the default is 100. I'm just gonna change it to 200. I mean, you could do 1000 if you want. Um, and then you, uh, the last thing I want to um, um, tell R is the confidence interval, let's say 0.95. So if I run this um, here, it saved the results in an object that called IRF1. It's very difficult to look at just the object and tell uh, uh, the best way to, to look at the object or to, to, to investigate or to explore that object is basically by plotting the object. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the function plot. And um, before, I mean, of course you can just plot it like as it is now, but as a good practice, you should uh, label your axes and your, your, your give a title for your, um, your graph. So basically when you have so many graphs, then you know which graph saying what or looking at what. So in this case, I'm just going to say uh, Y lab. This is the response of um, Y2. And um, I'm going to add um, a, a title, which is called main. And that will be, let's say, I'm just going to say, this is Y2 um, uh, response to uh, Y1 shock. Because again, because I put the impulses Y1. So this is like, all these are options. So you don't need to do that. But as I said, this is your kind of good practice. So you know uh, what you are plotting uh, if you have more than one graph. So it's easy to, to tell. Okay, so uh, okay. So when I do that, I don't know if you can see the graph or not. Can you see the graph guys? 
So what, what does this tell us? It tells us basically, thank you. So it, it, tell, it tells us that what the, the dotted line here is these are the confidence interval and the, um, the, the, what we're looking at the, um, the median or the, the, the response is the, the black line. And these are just the intervals. So it tells you if that response was significant or not. And these are the month or the time period. So different time periods. So basically it tells me here that the response, if there's a, a shock to the variable Y1, then they, there will be a positive response. So Y2 will respond positively to that. So it will increase basically. Um, and that increase seemed to be significant. Why? Because this zero line here, is outside these confidence intervals. So um, until until maybe um, when it comes to uh, before, like let's say eight month or nine month here, because like just before or maybe before that, like seven or so, so it becomes insignificant because now the zero line just become between these two confidence interval. So it says like the response here, you see the response come to the maximum point here and then just drop and then dies out and and why the reason it dies out and that's how you should see it um, because the uh, the data are stationary so the eventually that response should die out okay dying out means like going back or converge to zero okay um and and it is significant let's do this with the um, the second one um just to compare and 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 then we uh we'll just move to the last point. And I know we were running out of time, but I'll, I'll finish in two minutes. So if I do this, let's say, um, I'll call it IRF2. And in this case, I want to cause the shock or have the shock in impulse in Y2 and the response of Y1. And obviously we need to relabel these again. So this is Y1 and this is Y, uh, Y1 uh, response to uh, Y2 shock. So I'm going to run this these two lines just to print the graph straight away uh, just to get it here it's finished and now we can um, see the graph here oh this is not the right graph sorry uh, well because you see that's why because i need to rename this in plot so i just plot the, the wrong graph so i'm going to plot this one and in that case if you see this graph now so it just show you another example, but this is a insignificant response. So we see this, the response here is negative. However, it is insignificant because the, the confidence intervals are um, around the zero point. So that means they are not significant. So uh, Y2 uh, does not, uh, sorry, Y1, the um, response to uh, a shock to Y2 isn't significant, isn't statistically significant. Uh, the last point, well, I'm just going to, go through this very quickly is the variance decomposition and basically in the variance decomposition you want to say uh, if there is a shock to a variable like the proportion of this uh, shock uh, is it due to uh, how much is due to the main variable the variable itself and how much is due to the um, other variables in the system so um, let me just and again if you don't know what that means just go back to the lecture uh, video and the lecture notes, I just wanna show you how to produce that here. So to produce this here, let's say, so the, let's go, I'm gonna call this whatever you can call it, um, um, VD or variance decomposition or whatever. Uh, the function is FEVD, okay, and what you need to use is, as you see, it gives you the suggestions here. So I need to use the var object, the estimation, and I need to uh, tell var how many steps ahead. So in this case, let's, let's use 10. So if I if I do that, and now it just saved the, this in an object called VD, all what I need to do is to plot that VD to explore it and see what, oops, I made Okay, so let's let's put this up. So as you can see this from this graph, this is it tell you the percentage of the shock where it come from. So um, the black the black one here is Y one. I mean it's obvious here in, in, in R you can see it. Um, so that means most of the these come from um, the variable cell from Y one. But when you look at Y two, okay, so we'll have 
the um, the black or the the, the dark colored one is um, uh, is is Y one again. The the light uh, color or the gray color uh, uh, is the um, for Y two. So basically, that's how it tell you the percentages uh, the percentage how which one uh, come from which one. So this is from this is how much it's caused by or from um, uh, Y one, and this is how much it is due to um, uh, 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 y to itself. Anyway, so as I said, if you if you don't know what that means, the variance decomposition, just go back to the lecture and it'll explain you what that means and how to interpret this graph. The most important point here is that how to generate or how to create that graph in, in R. So I hope this uh, was useful. I hope you find this useful. I'm going to stop the recording now. Just, just take one or two questions quickly.